Recently, the American Academy of Periodontology has come up with a new classification of recession. So I think it would be apropos at this point to talk a little bit about biotype and its impact on recession, treatment of recession, and the like. So this video is designed to produce what I think is a new classification of biotype and its clinical significance. Biotype, classification and clinical significance. The biotype is based on two things, the gingival thickness and the bony thickness. And this classic article by Baldy gives us an idea scientifically of what a gingival thickness should be. It should be at least one millimeter thick. The bony thickness, however, has never been determined. So the total biotype is based on the gingival thickness plus the bony thickness. And we're striving for a two millimeter thick biotype. And if it's thin, it's less than two millimeters. If it's normal, it's two millimeters. If it's thick, it's greater than two millimeters. And I want to emphasize this is the total of the bony biotype added to the gingival biotype. This is the biotype classification that I am offering. Class one, the gingival thickness is one millimeter. The bony uh, thickness is one millimeter. A class two, the gingival thickness is less than one millimeter. The bony thickness is less than one millimeter. A class three, the gingival thickness is one millimeter, but the bone thickness we've got is missing and we have a dehiscence. A class four is gingival thickness of less than a millimeter and there is a dehiscence. And the class four would be what we refer to as the washboard looking effect, even if recession is not present. The clinical significance and predisposition to recession. A class one is slight. A class two is slight to moderate. A class three is moderate and certainly a class four would be severe. Creating a thick gingival biotype. On the left, you can see that we have a type four biotype. We have a dehiscence and certainly an inadequate, inadequate thickness of gingiva. We're going to use a fairly thick connective tissue graph. Here we can see on the post-op that we have taken that type four biotype and created a type one biotype because this is over two millimeters thick, but as you will note, it is purely a gingival biotype as no bone is on the facial of those teeth. Now let's talk about the impact of orthodontic expansion. If we expand the arch, then we're gonna get a thinner biotype. However, if we retract the teeth, we're gonna get a thicker biotype. On this 14 year old boy, we have a biotype class two. We have a normal gingival biotype, but once the flap is reflected and we can see in this scan that we have inadequate bone. So that would be an inadequate bone, but a normal gingiva. So that would be a bio class two. But by using localized PAOO, we can see on the right where the bone grafting material has adhered there and we have a thick biotype now with the bony part being the greater of the two. The post-op view on that after the orthodontics is complete, and I think you would all agree that the likelihood of recession with all that bone in the lower anterior would be remote. Therefore, in the future, we may consider to localize PAOO when we know the bone type is inadequate. So here's the pre-op view, and you will notice in the upper arch that the teeth in the bicuspid area or premolar area were moved facial. And certainly doing a little localized PAOO would make us have a thick biotype and a nice thick bony biotype as well. And the same thing is true in the lower anterior area. Summary. A normal biotype is two millimeters. Even with a dehiscence, a two millimeter gingival biotype can be created by soft tissue grafting. When the bone type is inadequate or missing and the gingival biotype is normal, 
using some localized PAOO can be used to create a thick biotype. It is my hope by offering this short video on a classification of biotype, it's going to increase our understanding of what we're trying to accomplish with our soft tissue grafting and creating bone over some of these dehiscences so that the cases would be more stable and less susceptible to recession in the future.